Okay, last night, 2 Samuel chapter 7, we learn about the the covenant with David by God, the sure mercies of David. Tonight, we're going to pick up in verse 18, the response of David. 2 Samuel seven eighteen. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord. Where's the Lord? In the most holy place. Where's David? What else can you say? If he's sitting before the Lord, he's got to be in the most holy place. If not the most holy place, he's in the holy place. If not, he's in the tabernacle looking at the first veil. David has entered where no other man can go. Saul, and Saul didn't go in the tabernacle. He just started offering offerings to God, which is for the priest to do. Uzziah walks right into the holy place and he gets leprosy. John the Baptist's father is in the holy place offering up the incense of prayer time and there's a man standing there Gabriel and man he is in a panic no one needs to be in here and he said who am I O Lord God and what is my house well, this, is what, this is what God just spoke about that thou has brought me hitherto David is humbled Lord God, uh, what you just said, who, 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 who am I? Man, I have spent most of my life running from the king of the land of Israel. I am just a shepherd. I am a poor shepherd. Okay, I'm king. So what? What am I? He, and, he huh? referred to himself as a flea on a dog. Yeah. Twice to saw. He's on this a flea. I have no advantage. Look at that. And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God. What David wanted to do is say, David's, I, I dwell in a perfect, wonderful house. God's out there in curtains. And God turned around and said, Nathan, go back to David and tell David, I saw what you want to do. You can't do it. But this is what I'm going to do. Forget the house. Your throne I am going to establish forever and that Jesus Christ will sit on that throne. Let's look at Luke. More ladies, right now in my heart, Luke 2 or 3. Uh, Luke 1. I believe. Yeah, Luke 1, and we'll start in verse 30 to get the context. Now, this is Gabriel. Luke 1 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over all the house of Jacob forever. That is 2 Samuel 7. And David, I don't even know if David realizes has the fact is that the Messiah... Now, maybe David's thinking his sons, his sons, his sons, his sons, his sons. But when you come up to Kaniah, God says, I'm done with your seed. I've had it with you, Judah. Babylon's going to come here. We're going to destroy everything. Or if or right this man childless, that we have to have a virgin born, Isaiah speaks about. I am going to put a man on that throne, David. And he's going to be of your seed, but not man, but of the woman, Genesis 3.15. And I don't even know if David has the context that this is the Messiah, not just Saul. Now it's also spoken in thy servant's house for a great while to come. Oh yeah, all eternity. <laughs> and this is and is this the manner of man, O Lord God? 
I'm a sinner. God, I haven't done right. What on earth did you just tell me? What can David say more unto thee? You realize David's going to be prince when Jesus is king? You realize that the prince has access to the temple, according to Ezekiel, in the millennium? You know the prince is going to have his portion? And thy word's sake, and according to thy own heart, hast thou done all these great things. Now look at that. It has not yet been done. And David said, thou hast done it. David has marked it, signed, sealed, and delivered. It's done. It is not done yet. Whenever the end of the tribulation period, Jacob's trouble at the seventh year, the end of the tribulation period, when Jesus Christ mounts up and comes back and gets rid of all the goats and sets up the sheep and puts Israel in their land and sits down on David's throne, that's when this prophecy happens. That's not happened yet. You see how sure David is? It happened. God, you're speaking prophecy. I'm speaking. It has happened already. That's the heart of David that God said, I, I like that. And that throne of yours, my son is going to sit on it. And you'll be the prince. Great things to, to make thy servant known to them. Wherefore, Thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee. Whoa! According to all that we have heard with our ears, David has listened to his father, he has listened to his grandfather, he probably listened all the way back to Boaz, he goes all the way back to Isaac, to, uh, to Jacob, to Isaac, to Abraham, and to the fathers before that. David knows what his father said about God. Wherefore, thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people? It's America. America's the best. God bless America! Even like Israel. No, it's not America. It's not Italy. It's not even England. The sun shall never set upon the English Empire. Oh, Japan, the, the, the nation of the rising sun. No, sorry. It's Israel. We don't even know America's going to survive through the tribulation period. She may go before the tribulation. The way she is now, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself. Who is that? It's Israel. God himself redeemed Israel for himself and to make him a name and to do for you great things and terrible. The entire thing that happened in Exodus, the ground opened up and swallowing one family. The manna, the serpents, for thy land before thy people which thou redeemest to thee, for thee, God, to thee, from Egypt, from the nations that, and from the nations and their God. God has delivered Israel from all the gods and from all the nations. And they haven't even gone to ba Babylonian captivity yet. Babylon is not even really a nation yet. We're going to read, and you see these people today, oh, we're waiting for the North Armies to come in Israel. Yeah, we're waiting for, no, no one's going to happen. But there's a North Army going to come in and attack Israel. And that's going to start within Jacob's, uh, Jacob's trouble. For thou has confirmed, first time that word shows up, to thyself, thy people, Israel, to be a people unto thee forever. God confirmed it. First confirmation in the Bible is not Catholic. There's a thing called confirmation in the Catholic Church. They stole it from Israel. There it is. And thou, Lord, art become their God. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant, that's David, 
and concerning his house. Now look at that. Now he's third person. It's David speaking, but you know, David, the person in his house, establish it forever. God answers that prayer. And do as thou hast said. And let thy name be magnified forever. Saying, the Lord of hosts is the God of, is over Israel. And let the house of thy servant David be, thy servant David, look, third person, be established before thee. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, has revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee an house. I thought it was David that wanted to build an house. Man, we're talking about something that's even more than the temple. The temple has been destroyed twice. The Antichrist is going to go sit in the temple and sit in the most holy place. And, be, and declare that he is God and then show all the magical wonders. Like Christians do with their magic tricks today to fool people. And declare the Antichrist as God, being God in the most holy place. But there's something more than that. That temple that was destroyed in 70 AD, the very footprints of Jesus was in that place. His hands touch walls and doors and stuff in that temple. It's gone. It's destroyed. But the king, the kingdom, and the seat of David will go on forever. That house. There's a quiet... Listen, after Kaniah, there are no more kings. There is no king in Israel today. It's Jesus Christ, but he's at the right hand of the Father, and they won't receive him as their king. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, hast revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee in house. Therefore, has thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. This is a prayer. Now, O Lord God, thou art that God, and thy hands be true. I mean, thy words be true. Thou hast performed, excuse me, thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore, now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee. It's going to be of thee, Jesus. And for thou, O Lord God, has spoken it and with thy blessings let the house of thy servant be blessed forever now let's run over to first chronicles 17 verily verily it's repeated it's important you find it twice in the bible first chronicles 17 then we'll break it down again first chronicles 17 16 1 Chronicles 17, verse 16. We'll read it first. And David the king came and sat before the Lord. That's twice. And said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And yet, this was a small thing in thy eyes, O God. For thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast regarded, regarded me according to the state, first time he state, first time that word shows up, of man of high degree, O Lord. Man, you can put any man up on degree, you can put any man on a pedestal, you can put his picture anywhere, you can... And David just said, what on earth did you just do with me, God? Wouldn't it be interesting if the... Uh, I'm not talking about just the throne and the judgment and the kingdom of David. Wouldn't it be interesting if God has David's throne? Or even Solomon's throne? Remember that thing with ivory overcovered with, with gold and lions? What if God... What if, what if God has that throne somewhere packed up in heaven ready to for Jesus to sit on it? What if it's literal and physical and spiritual and political? I'm not I don't know. 
But it is the house of David. I know that. O oh Lord God, what can David speak more to thee for the house of thy servant? For the honor of thy servant. For th I'm going to move the light a little more closer. Okay. For thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast regarded me according to the estate of a man of high degree, O oh Lord God. What can David speak more to thee for the honor of thy servant? You're not supposed to honor a man. The Bible says, honor thy mother and father. And look at God honoring David. For thou knowest thy servant. O Lord, for thy servant's sake, and according to thy own heart, hast thou done all this greatness, like it's already happened, and making known all these great things. O Lord, there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. What and what and what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel? None. Whom God went to redeem to be his own people. Redeems to buy back. Here is something of value it is mine i've got a receipt i am taking it back it was the lambs of that passover that god redeemed israel out of egypt it will be jesus christ upon the cross that will redeem lost men to be his own people to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness by driving out nations from before thy people that's the second advent. Whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. For thy people Israel, didst thou make thy own people forever. And there are churches that preach that God's all finished with Israel. And thou, Lord, becamest their God. Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant. And concerning his house, be established forever, and do as thou hast said. Let it even be established that thy name may be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, even a God to Israel, 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 Israel. And let the house of David thy servant be established before thee. For thou, O my God, and that's not a, you know, a figure of speech. David is in awe. Oh my God, what are you doing? Who am I of this promise you just put to me and my family? Can you imagine David going and saying, Jesse, his father, come here for a minute. Sit down, Dad. Let me tell you what God just said about our family. Imagine David taking little Solomon coming and says, Solomon, come with me. I'm going to explain to you and keep explaining to Solomon. This, this is what God has for you and me, son. I don't know why. But our family and our throne, God said forever. It's amazing. For thou, oh my God, has told that you better be careful how you use that. Oh my God! Better be O M G. You better be very careful. Every idle word, God will judge. Has thou has thy servant that thou wilt build him an house, and therefore thy servant has found in his heart to pray before thee, and now Lord thou art God, and has promised this goodness unto thy servant. Now therefore, let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant. They may be before thee forever, and it will be. For thou blessest, O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever. Now having your hands in 2 Samuel 7 and 1 Chronicles 17, we'll break down the verses. Now interesting, in, first, in 2 Samuel 7, 18, it says, Lord God, O Lord God. 
capital L O R D, capital G O D. In First Chronicles, it says, O Lord God, it's capital L O R D, capital G O D. Look at that. All together, both ways, it's all capital. When you put both books together, don't mess with the Bible. It says in 2 Samuel 7 19. And second, uh, First Chronicles 17, 17, regard me according to the state of a man of high degree. And David said, you know, what am I? Who am I? There is no man that can be put as high as an office except Jesus Christ, what God has done to David. Now, you want to see another one? Second Samuel 7, 21. Now get this one. It says, for thy word's sake. First Chronicles 17, 19. O Lord, for thy servant's sake. Now, as a family, and you gotta go back into to the to our studies that we have online of the Gospel of John. Who is the Word of God? Is Jesus not a servant of his father? Look at Jesus Christ with David. Thy word is called thy servant. That's Jesus Christ. Look at that. There is Jesus Christ. I'm not going to talk about modern Bible, but I guarantee they messed that up. Now in 2 Samuel 7, 23, it says, for you, for you great things and terrible for thy land. 1 Chronicles 17, 21 says, make thee a name of greatness and terribleness. I guarantee when the Israelites left Egypt, I guarantee God had a name. Of mighty, of terrible, and you believe what that terrible God did. And while the Israelites were in the land of Egypt, I get man, isn't it just terrible what's happening? The adjective of what God was doing to the judgments of Egypt has now become the proper name of God forever. Terrible. And terrible doesn't mean God is wicked and bad, it means it implores, it brings about terror. You ought to be shaking in your shoes when you're talking about God the Father. It's amazing when you look at the scriptures with scriptures. It's amazing when we see that things are put together twice, three times in the Bible. Jesus said, verily, verily. That means it's important. As we're looking at these kings through Israel and for the Judah, as we see there will be two times, three times, sometimes maybe once. It's important. One book will back up the other book and it will give you extra detail that was not in the first or the second. 